John Smoltz was on the call last night, courtesy of uh, Fox Sports, and uh, he joins us now. Some festivities there, a little fireworks there, some bad blood there as well. What did you take away from this uh, game last night? Yeah, definitely. I think without the fans, right, you got to generate your own intensity, and your and and the, and I've seen that the teams that have the most excitement in their in their uh, dugouts, it may not always be received well because we don't typically get to hear the bantering going back and forth. Well, guess what? You can hear just about everything. And as a broadcaster, you know, all I could have done is said, look, here, I'm throwing my mask at you. I mean, that's all I could have done. But I, 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 I could check a couple things off of my, of my list of things I've never seen. I've never seen a glove throw that, that, that long, other than uh, Jesse Orozco, maybe when he threw his up to the sky and they won the whole thing, that their series. So, uh, yeah, I, I kind of agree that I echoed the same uh, sentiments of what uh, Mookie Betts said. You know, the only thing you just can't have in this game, you can't have it both ways. You got to be able to take what comes back at you when you show that kind of emotion. And I'm fine with the emotion. Uh, it's just the emotion sometimes is trying to create something for your team because you're behind and you hope it had carryover effect and it looked like it did because they went back to back on, on the homers. Okay, but the Dodger pitcher who's celebrating yeah. gave up a home run. Like, if Bellinger doesn't bring it back, like, right. he can't celebrate. He didn't strike out the side. No, no, he was He, he was gave up a bomb, John. Yeah, he did. He did. He, he gave up a – well, it turned into one of the best catches you're going to see in a while, and I think he was so excited that his his teammate caught, caught it uh, that um, – yeah, know, but he's he, blowing kisses to the Padres dug out there. I get I mean, it. I, I mean, I, I guess here's the thing that I've always said. You know, when you when you watch baseball and you see the uh, uh, exuberant celebrations on home runs, the unbelievable uh, bat flips, why – I ask you this question. Okay. Why does the hitters only get to do it? You never see we, – we look at, at Trevor Bauer, and he's the uh, outlier when he walks off the mound the way he does – I think as pitchers, as a group of pitchers, it's time that they start showing some excitement. I, I, I did the Pascual Perez thing, you know, back in the day, a little shimmy when I got a chance to strike him out. No, it's all, it's all good. I think, I, and I'm, I'm okay with pitchers. Dennis Eckersley used to, you know, shoot you yeah, down. You, sit down. You're next. Yes. Get out. Yeah. We need more of that, I guess. I, I love it. I, I'm, I'm fine with all of that. I want baseball to be a celebration. Mm -hmm. I know, John, you got to get kids watching. And I'm not saying be gimmicky, but if I'm a kid and I'm watching, it doesn't move. People throw really hard and swing really hard. Other than that, there's no joy in Mudville. And that's my biggest concern with baseball is how do you create an atmosphere if I'm a 10 year old, a 12 year old, because you're, you know, your demo is in the fifties, probably mid fifties. Yeah. You got to create something that if I'm a sports fan, why am I watching this? Well, you're watching it because these guys have fun. Tatis. Love it. I love it. You know, you want to do that bat flip. If you got a guy on the mound who's striking people out, punching you out, I'm good with that as well. Have fun. Every other sport does. Yeah, and, and that, that's my only point. It's like it, it's only kind of the hitters that get to do it. And I, and and look, uh, if a pitcher started doing it, it would be, probably be a little bit more entertaining um, because they have the opportunity to do it a few more times to the same batter. But it's it's interesting how the only thing I would say is that the context of sometimes you can't get mad if the other the other team's going to do something. You just can't. That's the only thing. And in the heat of the moment, of course, you can always have your uh, – you're all right. We'll give them a break type thing. But when I, when I, when I saw the glove toss, I, I gotta be honest. I was like, that, that's a first. And if he had the insight to be able to do that based on the bat tossed, like to do that, that quickly, that would be, um, I got to give him some props. I, I understand that the Dodgers absolutely love this kid. And, and certainly if you throw a hundred and you got a wipe out slider, like he does, um, I guess it's uh, easy to love him. Would you rather hit a game-winning home run or have the game-winning catch? Like if, if you could have had would, Bellinger's catch to win a game or a home run, a walk-off? I've always said, you know, um, I've robbed more home runs than any pitcher in the history of the game, right? I mean, that's that's a fact um, <laughs> because I kept track in, in shagging fly balls. But I, I would much rather rob a home run. I think that's one of the coolest plays we rarely get to see. If I were commissioner, I would make sure every stadium – uh, except 
Boston. You can't really change that wall. I would make sure every fence has a chance for a guy to rob a home run. I think it's one of the most exciting plays. Um, the game winning home run. There's just so much more of them that that catch last night. Look, that's a game changing yes. kind of series changer. Yeah. And, and in a short series, you know, if that was the best of seven in game two, ah, you know, you got much more time to kind of rebound from it. That's game. That's a, that's a basically game two uh, of a best of five. And that's much more difficult to come back from. I had a couple of notes as I was watching the game last night. First of all, the ballpark itself. So you have two teams that aren't used, you know, it's not their home field there. Right. And and are, do you play differently now that you're in this bubble and you're not able to be in your ballpark? I mean, the Dodgers would at least be familiar with the Padres ballpark. And here you are in a, a, a different ballpark. And how does strategy change for these two teams? I think the biggest thing is, uh, you know, you're, you're, I mean, the ball's jumping out of those other two ballparks that they play in uh, in the other series. So there's 18 home runs in L.A. and, what, 15 home runs in, in San Diego. So the familiarity of when you hit a ball is pretty obvious to those guys. Here they're getting used to, okay, this was the first night that the ball actually carried a little bit. We saw some homers go uh, over the fence. This is a big ballpark. It's a really, really beautiful park. And I think you would play differently from a base running standpoint because the gaps are huge. Defensively, you're going to have to cover more. So those things come into play. Um, but what a, what a great venue. And I think both both clubs have talked about how uh, you know big the ballpark is. And, and certainly they've, they've squared up some balls that got caught. So if you, if you have some defense out there in center field especially, you're going to make – you're going to take away a lot of runs. Talking to John Smoltz, the Hall of Famer, working for uh, Fox Sports. He had the call last night with the Dodgers and Padres. Uh, you talked about Clayton Kershaw. Some of these pitchers have their own catcher. Explain how a catcher is that much different for for a, a pitcher. Well, the familiarity of 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 just being on the same page, right? There are times that you aren't on the same page, and that continuity kind of affects the flow. And when you know there's a guy back there that's thinking along the same lines of you, and he's doing your work, he's doing his work, and you've done yours, and they match up. That is, that is something that is hard to explain to the viewer that why that's so important. You would think that um, throwing to anybody based on your stuff would be okay, but the way a guy catches the ball, the way he frames it, the way his setup is can be appealing. And, and on the op opposite side, it can be a little awkward when you don't see things the same way. A bigger catcher, for example, might not frame well. I've thrown to a lot of different catchers, and there is a difference between the way they set up, how they receive, and how you're on the same page. You don't want to be out there shaking your head a lot. You want to be able to be in rhythm. How do you tell the other catcher that you don't want him? <laughs> uh, you know, the numbers will speak pretty uh, obviously. I, I think the disparity of the ERA between the two catchers, and not that Will Smith's not a great catcher, was pretty high. And sometimes the sample size isn't, isn't good. But I think that comes to the manager. Uh, I've only had one instance where I, I felt compelled to go to Bobby Cox and go, give me the kid. Give me Brian McCann. It just happened to work out. We won seven games in a row. He stayed up in the big leagues and the rest was history for him. History for him. But you've seen over the course of time that pitchers definitely are comfortable with, I guess, quote unquote, personal catchers. The, only th the other thing you'll hear is, hey, we need to give uh, so-and-so a day off, so he just happens to be the guy that catches this guy. <laughs> what were the Yankees doing in the previous game? Not the one they lost last night, because I think they may have lost the series by trying to be too smart to outraise the Rays with you know, or, you know the lineup, right hand, left hand, that whole thing. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, obviously, when you make those decisions, you feel like they're the right decisions at the moment, and you hope they all work out. But – you know, what we're seeing is a kind of uh, a confluence, if you will, between the organizations that have um, in this setup, which we have never seen with no off days, have the ability to be able to go deep in a series, which gives them the advantage depth wise. I, I, in my memory, I don't remember too many series where you go in and go, we don't have a fourth or a fifth starter. And in some cases, we didn't have a third starter. But the Yankees kind of have that. And to your point, I, I, I'm, I'm a little intrigued with why they set up, you know, the situation the way they did. And, and you're right. It, it, if they don't win this game, I'm, I'm assuming that Garrett Cole would pitch game five. Yeah. But this format is really going to either shed light on some things or expose some things for these clubs. 
I just think it gives the, the team with the best depth the best chance to move forward. And you might very well say the Rays have the best depth in the American League for sure. Yeah, I, I have the Rays and the Dodgers in the World Series. But if you said that it was going to be the Dodgers and Astros, I'd sign up for that right now. Well, the storylines, there'd be a lot to talk about, right? I mean, there would be, you want to talk about um, the emotion and the things that you're going to see. Now, at that point, we'll still, we'll have some fans, which would be nice. It won't be uh, a packed house, but at least some but, fans. But not ho- home ballparks, right? Correct. Yeah, correct. And and I think, look, I understand. I totally understand where the Astros are as a team. I just think it's hard sometimes you, you got to bite your tongue and and you just got to prove it. You just got to go out and prove it. And that's what they're doing. They're playing great team baseball and they've lost a lot of stars. And certainly the narrative is going to be one that you really can't speak to if you're them um, because it just has one of those, you just know when, you know, scenarios attached to it. Yeah. And I don't want to hear from them. I don't want it to be, Hey, you, you know, can you criticize us now? If, if you could play this way, then why did you cheat? That was that's still what I keep coming back to. If you're this good, we thought you were this good. Then why did you cheat? Yeah, I, and again, like I said, it's it's this year will come and go. We'll we'll find out a, a champion. We'll be able to talk about. I think the hardest road road to a champion ever. I think the the World Series winner is going to have a uh, no asterisks. And by the way, probably the hardest journey that they've ever had not even taking into considerations the COVID journey. It's just the tournament itself present, presents so many uh, tough obstacles. And, I, and I'll say this, nobody has more pressure than the Dodgers. And the yeah. second most team that has the pressure is probably the Yankees. Um, but nobody has had more pressure than the Dodgers and they've handled it so far um, incredibly well. Yeah, I just get a sense of when they win, it's relief, not celebration. Yeah, that's, that's, a, good, uh, that's a good depiction of where they're at because you think about that first series – is a scary uh, best of three. And then this series, of course, with it's rare that you have the two best records playing this early, but that's the way it's set up. And and it just so happens the Padres have unfortunately lost some key pitching yeah. uh, to, to not be able to mix and match the way they, they thought they could against, you know, the bullies of their uh, division. Because for the last five years, they've had their their way with the Padres. And it's a new it's going to be a new next five years uh, in the <clears throat> in the West. There's certain pitchers, you know, I thought Pedro had his Sandy Koufax moment. He had like five or six years, which he was just incredible in the American League, in that ballpark. You know, obviously Sandy Koufax. You you pitched with Maddox on your team. Kershaw's had that run as well. Does Kershaw fit in with those guys with having that five, six-year window that is historical? Oh, absolutely. I, I mean – I, when when I do a game, you know, you dive back into the numbers and you got to check it like three times. Go, really? This is his career numbers? It doesn't seem it, – it just seems like it's a video game. And I think to his credit, what he's been able to do over the course of his career and in, in this era, he's the perfect pitcher that could pitch in any era. Like they talk about certain pitchers 15 years ago that couldn't pitch today. They're probably right. But in the sense that this era – is a swing and miss and Homer era. He has still dominated because he's figured out how to do that. And I'll tell you the one thing, you know, I know we're going to all talk about his postseasons ups and downs, but you watch at the end of his career, it's going to be more up than it is down. And that's the one thing, keep giving the ball on the guy in this, in this time frame, and he's going to deliver. I think it's a great point. And I was, I was thinking about that, that I wanted to ask you as I watch him and he gets so many swings and misses. And in this game now, it is a swing and either connect or miss. You don't put the ball in play. And to have that ability, you know, he was topping out at like 92, I think, on his fastball. But, you know, that's just to kind of keep you honest there. You know, that. but those breaking balls and these guys swinging for the downs there, you know, I don't, Ma- how would Maddox have been in today's game where he wanted you to put the ball in play? I, I, I love this question, and I, and I will argue with anybody who thinks that he would get beat up. There's no way. He would absolutely dominate in this era. The one thing about the style of hitting is there's no adjustments, right? So I get the fact that the easiest way to score is to hit a home run. So you wait for a mistake. You don't have to alter your swing and you, and you mash them. He's not going to give you a chance to get the ball in the area where you want to. And that's the one difference between the style of pitching today, where you live in the zone with stuff because the stuff is phenomenal. But when you make a mistake, it goes a long way. <laughs> and I just don't think Greg makes a lot of mistakes. I watched over the course of his career just carve guys up. 
on the corners and be able to get them to chase velocity, then change speeds. And I think that's the one, you know, it's very difficult to transcend kind of eras. I wish we could do it and we could do it statistically, but you can't do it in your mind to think like, oh, this guy would get killed. and This guy would do this. I know his strikeouts would go up and his homers would go up, but I don't think he would suffer because the style of hitting would cause him to suffer. It would be his pitching that would expose the style of hitting. John, of course, uh, in the Hall of Fame, but you did have three career stolen bases. Oh, yeah. Didn't you steal third ones? You know, I was, I was a, b- before people ever got to know me as a pitcher, <laughs> I was the official pinch runner when I got called up under Russ Nixon. And I still talk about one of the most infamous moments of where I pinch ran in San Diego. And I was called earlier than I was prepared for because I didn't have my spikes on. I had my turf <laughs> sheet on. And, and, I, and I say this all the time. I had milk duds. I was enjoying a great game in the dugout. And I got called in and I couldn't find my helmet. Jody Davis was at first. I had to shove the box of milk duds in my back pocket. <laughs> and it took about five minutes to get a helmet. I realized as I was running out, he had my helmet. We switched helmets. I got to first. Benito Santiago was behind the plate. So I was scared to death to get picked off. I got thrown out at second by uh, just a little bit on a, on a, I think it was a bunt, and I slid on my milk duds, and I got chewed out later by my manager for not having spikes. So, but I say all that, that I did have speed back then, and no, it doesn't look like, it didn't look like it. I did, but I have, yeah, three stolen bases in my career. Milk in the postseason, I have a stolen base, too. Oh, I of think course I'm you do. One. Yeah. Only one have that. Yeah. Not many pitchers have a stolen base in the postseason. Did I tell you I've robbed back-to-back homers on back-to-back pitches in the, in the, in the, in BP? That's still – I mean, I just thought I'd throw that out there. It's hard to do. Back-to-back well, pitches. No, people still talk about that. Oh, good. Yeah. And I have a baseball card robbing a home run. <laughs> favorite baseball card. Uh. I'm not going to bring up the Barry Bonds home run or anything like that. Yeah, this should probably should. He no. did do it though. He said what he was going to do, and he did it. <laughs> and you threw a, and you threw a great pitch. <laughs> Twice. Yes. It's, bad man. it's always a great pitch. Man, he hit a great pitch there. You know, yeah. nobody ever says, "Man, he hit a crappy pitch there." Uh, John will be on the call with uh, Matt Vasgersian uh, tonight, Game Three. Padres Dodgers at 9 Eastern exclusively on MLB Network and then Game 4, potential Game 5 where on, uh, air on Fox Sports 1. Great to talk to you. We'll be uh, watching tonight, John. You got it. Thank you, Thanks. buddy. That's uh, Johnny Smoltz, Hall of Famer.